Today in the lab, we're talking about families and digital photo and video security. From an early age, kids love seeing themselves in photos and videos. And then as they grow, they love taking photos and videos. And then because they've seen mom and dad do it, they love to share those photos and videos. So how can moms and dads encourage their kids to enjoy photography and creating videos while also looking out for their safety and security? First thing, go positive. Encourage kids to take pictures. It's a great way to find personal expression and creativity, and the tools are more accessible than ever. Show them some simple tips, like the rule of thirds when framing, how to avoid backlighting, and maybe show them the filters and effects on their phone. Then, disable the GPS tagging on their phone. It's easy to do on most smartphones or an iPhone. You might consider disabling this feature on your own phone if you don't want to disclose the location of where you are taking photos of your kids. Now, once kids have mastered taking photos and videos, they're going to want to share them with their friends. And their preferred mode of communication, as any parent will tell you, is text message. The average teenage texter sends more than 50 messages per day. The problem is, Texting is not a very good way to share photos and videos. We know this is not a good idea. And even though the latest data suggests that parental worries over sexting might be overblown, sharing photos and videos can lead to problems like teasing and bullying. So explain to your kid that when you share a photo or video via text message, it's like giving that piece of content to the other person to do with whatever they want. So something that seems very cute and funny one moment in another context could seem not so funny. Kids are really interested in sharing photos and videos on sites like Facebook and with apps like Instagram. I heard a, a girl the other day, she's nine years old, asking to get on Instagram. But that would be a violation of federal law. The COPPA statute dictates that sites that allow users to share information cannot allow access to kids younger than 13. And while Facebook does allow users to implement some privacy restrictions, they still claim the rights to use any images uploaded for their own purposes. Instagram is a terrible idea for kids. All photos posted there are viewable by all members. It's a public forum. Really bad idea. So what other options are there? Well, you could create a gallery using iPhoto or Shutterfly, allow friends to add photos but not to download, and all the content is secure. You can also create a passworded blog or glog, and that's another great option as well. Our friends at Burstit have also created a really interesting solution. Using their app, what I do is I allow my daughter to go snap a photo or a video. I've created a group of her friends. She shows me the photo or video, and if I think it's appropriate, I burst it to all of her friends. They're sent a link, and they're allowed to view the content, but they can't download it or manipulate it in any way. If in a few weeks she doesn't think that video is so cute or funny anymore, I can unburst it or I can take down the content altogether. Overall, it's a great and secure solution. And no matter which solution you choose, it's always important to talk to your kids about appropriate sharing, security, and respect. Well, if you've got some ideas about how to safely share photos and videos with family members and close friends that are of your kids, go to dadlabs.com and join the conversation there. And thanks to our friends at Burst It, and that's all for us here at dadlabs.com. <laughs>